This video is sponsored by Element. Quick little random interjection for anyone wondering why the heck I am doing weighted walking and backwards walking and all this walking. Nothing feels so good as when you feel strong and tall in the way that you stand and you're pain free. That just feels so good to me. Hey guys, it's Robin and welcome to the Science of Self Care. <laughs> On this channel we talk about health science, we talk about life philosophy, and we do a whole lot of self care experimentation. I am literally walking backwards right now because we are gonna be discussing my 30 day review of walking backwards every single day. I thought it would be really fun to walk backwards while we discuss this so I could really be in the headspace of someone who's walking backwards. I actually love moving and talking and listening and thinking at the same time. Moving my body just helps my brain work. So I hope this video is extra fun and eloquent because I'm getting a workout while we're doing this. <laughs> Backwards walking, also known as retro walking. Why the heck have I been doing this for 30 days? Well, firstly, to be honest, I'm doing it because you guys told me to in the comments. I say that a bit facetiously, but honestly, I probably wouldn't have tried this if you guys hadn't suggested it. So I do really love when you guys share ideas and thoughts in the comments. I do read them. I'm not always able to respond to everyone, but this one I got from you guys, and it seems like it's a pretty popular trend here on YouTube. In the first part of this video, I wanna go through my personal experience, what have I I found just subjectively. Also, how have I been feeling in my body? Any weird little quirky things I've noticed. Then we're gonna talk a little bit about the science. Is there any science to support this? What's happening in our bodies when we are walking backwards? And lastly, I'm gonna share kind of a roundup and what I'll be doing moving forward because I won't be doing the same thing that I was doing in this video after day 30. So what have I been doing for the past 30 days? There was only one rule I gave myself for this challenge, and that was every single day I had to spend 30 minutes walking backwards. It didn't matter if it was indoors, outdoors, uphill, downhill, around my dad's kitchen, which I definitely did in the middle of a snowstorm. I wanted to keep it as simple as possible in general. When trying a new habit, I like to keep it so simple. Probably I should have started with less than 30 minutes, but I wanted to give myself enough time to really notice any differences within the month. All right, now let's get into my personal experience week by week of how this backwards walking adventure went. Week one. My first initial introduction to backwards walking was outside at night in the street with a dog. <laughs> I would not recommend starting like that. I was imagining that building a backwards walking habit would be quite effortless and that I could just replace normal forwards walking moments with backwards walking. But as I found out in week one, walking backwards outside, especially in the company of dogs or other people, is not necessarily ideal. So it's not like all situations in which we're walking forwards are also great for walking backwards. That is what I quickly learned. Also on this first day, I really felt like I worked up more of a sweat. I don't know if it's the fact that I was wearing a heavy coat or work walking in the hills, but it did feel like it was a little bit more of an intense workout than a normal forwards walk. After doing this now for about a month, I don't know if I feel like it is that much more intense, but on this first day, actually two days, I was really sweating a lot. And in days two through four, my glutes, my thighs, and my heels were all very sore. To me, that is just a sign that I'm working different muscles than I normally am when I'm walking around forwards, and that is great. But the heels especially were interesting, and it made me want to try more barefoot walking so that I could really pay attention to how I was landing my feet. So basically, by the end of week one, I discovered my favorite way to practice backwards walking is what I'm doing right now, which is walking indoors on my little walking pad and doing it barefoot so that I can really pay attention to how I am placing my feet every single moment that I walk. And I was never super excited by the concept of barefoot shoes until this experiment, because I could really feel the difference when I was walking backwards barefooted versus when I was walking backwards in shoes. I feel like I'm getting more of the benefits and less of the pain when I don't wear shoes doing this. I don't know if it's because my shoes are worn out in a way that is complementary to forwards walking, and then when I'm backwards walking, the way that the soles are worn in 
is not really working. I don't know, but my heel pain is now completely gone and I really like doing backwards walking indoors on my walking pad. I think in this first week I was surprised by how sore my thighs and my glutes were as well because I am someone who does a lot of walking on a regular basis. I walk between 15 to 20,000 steps a day on average and I also do yoga and Pilates and full body exercises. So to get that soreness in new places is kind of exciting. It means that I'm tapping into different muscle groups than I normally am and that was probably the biggest theme of week one, is soreness, which to me is good. Week two. In week two, I really started to settle into a routine on my treadmill and my bare feet, and it was pretty easy to incorporate in my day-to-day -day because I do have a walking pad at home. What did become clear to me is that backwards walking is so incredibly slow <laughs> compared to forwards walking. And so if you are someone who counts steps, now I do believe steps is a bit of a vanity metric. It doesn't actually matter how many steps you take a day. It's about building habits of movement throughout your life. But if you are someone who pays attention to steps, this is what I noticed for me personally. So a half an hour of backwards walking gets me about 1200 steps, whereas a half an hour of forwards walking gets me about 3000 steps. It's more than twice as slow to walk backwards than it is to walk forwards. Something to keep in mind if you do like to walk with other people. I found I was way too slow to walk with my mom and my husband, but I do think if there's someone in your life, like a grandmother who is a very slow walker, this could actually be a great way to walk with them because you're still able to walk at their pace but get a more intense workout. So that's something I really felt in week two. Man, this is slow and also I am not getting a lot of steps from this activity but the trade-off is I am working different types of muscles than I normally would be. I think week two was a little bit uneventful. The soreness wore off, the physical changes I was noticing I felt also wore off a bit, and the novelty of this activity wore off, and it just felt like a little bit of a slow thing to be doing for 30 minutes each day. But I really feel like I got into a groove on my treadmill and with my bare feet. Week three! <laughs> In week three, I really felt like my results were plateauing and that I wasn't really noticing any specific benefits before I had such muscle soreness and it was very obvious that something was happening in my body. And then week three, I felt like, is this really worth doing 30 minutes each day? But of course I stuck with it. Yeah, so because week three was kind of uneventful and I felt like I had stopped noticing any changes in my body, I actually wanted to skip week four to see what happened if I took a break and then continue my last week in week five, which is what I did. And interestingly, I think that break did help me better understand what backwards walking was doing for my body. Week four slash week five. So I've talked about this on the channel before. I struggle with lordosis, which is kind of a hollowed back position where I have a frontward tilt to my pelvis. Usually that's due to some sort of muscle imbalances. And I feel like this activity takes some of that imbalance away and takes away the lower back pain a bit. I don't know if this is entirely in my head, but when I took a break and then reintroduced it, I do feel like that difference is more noticeable. Now that we have gone through my personal experience of backwards walking, I want to take a little moment to dive into the physiology of what's happening while we're walking backwards. But before we get into the literature and the physiology of this practice, I want to take a quick moment to talk about the sponsor of today's video, Element, my absolute favorite electrolytes ever. I drink them multiple times a week. But the reason I love these so much is that the ingredients are so incredibly simple. Sodium, potassium, magnesium at the ratios that I prefer, especially as someone who does hot yoga multiple times a week, I need to be adamant about replenishing those electrolytes. Otherwise, I will notice it in my body. I get headaches, I just do not feel good, and I cannot recover from my workouts as quickly. So Element is really a non-negotiable part of my workout routine, especially when I'm doing anything that involves a lot of sweating. So today I am going for raspberry salt flavor, one of my all-time favorites. Right now, Element is giving away a free sampler pack. If you use the code in my description with any Element order, you can get eight different Element flavors. It's a great way to experiment with different flavors. It's also a great little mini gift that you can give a loved one. So genuinely, thank you Element for sponsoring this video and supporting this channel. I absolutely love their products, use them every single week. 
So I purposely didn't want to read too much about backwards walking before trying it myself because I didn't want it to prime me or affect my observations in any way. But looking at the research now, I really am pleased to see a lot of studies supporting the practice of backwards walking. I will link all citations down below. But in general, there are several benefits I see coming up consistently. Firstly, backwards walking can help reduce lower back pain. Specifically, backwards walking leads to greater activation of the lumbar paraspinal muscles compared to forwards walking, which may be one reason for its rehab potential in chronic lower back pain. Backwards walking can also help support knee rehabilitation, with notable improvements for knee osteoarthritis specifically. Backwards walking can also improve balance and posture control as shown in many different subject groups. And lastly, backwards walking can help improve our cardiovascular condition because it seems to challenge our cardiovascular system more than forwards walking. I did find one article in the American Journal of Physical Medicine and Rehabilitation arguing that backwards walking is dangerous and should not be practiced unnecessarily. This article details two cases involving people falling and getting injured. I think this is a great reminder of why we should always work with experts, the doctors and the physical therapists to ensure that we're doing what's right for our body and our unique circumstance. Perhaps in one person's case, the risk of a fall may be too great and you would want to avoid walking backwards. So take this video as a jumping off point to talk to the experts in your life to see if this is a safe activity for you to be practicing. In terms of muscles, I learned that we're essentially using many of the same muscles, but we're using those muscles differently. Backwards walking involves more eccentric control of our muscles, muscles lengthening, versus when we walk forward, our muscle activity involves more concentric control, muscle shortening. So it makes a lot of sense that doing both of these activities would give us a more comprehensive workout for the muscles in our legs and feet. So welcome back to the backwards walking portion of this video. I wanna take a quick moment to review the pros and cons and kind of key takeaways of this video. So I'm now in my second to last day of this 30 day challenge and getting my steps in while we're filming this. And I think I do love backwards walking and I do think it works different parts of my legs and helps strengthen my glutes and by association also helps me put my pelvis in a better posture. However, this 30 minutes of backwards walking a day, to me, <laughs> seems a little bit unnecessary. So what I've learned from this experience is that backwards walking can help you activate different muscles of your legs and also muscles in the feet, but you don't need to do 30 minutes a day to get these benefits. So going forward after this 30 day experiment, I'm gonna start backwards walking for 10 minutes with a weighted belt and probably only do this several times, maybe tops five times a week, whenever I kind of think to fit it in. I'm just gonna walk for 10 minutes with my weighted belt on so that I can still activate those same muscles, get those benefits, but do it in a much more efficient manner. Because to be honest, I would much rather spend 30 minutes walking outside or with a loved one than walking walking by myself backwards on a treadmill in my house. So I still wanna leave plenty of time for my favorite kind of forwards walking in my life and just really get the most bang for my time with the backwards walking by doing a weighted 10 minute session. I just got my weighted belt. It's this really simple weighted belt from Amazon where you can take out these little metal plates Unfortunately, I think this one is sold out. All in all, I think it's hard to go wrong with a weighted belt as long as it looks comfy and durable. You can also make some weighted things yourself, like putting on a backpack with a bunch of water bottles, but this is just so comfy and discreet and I really like it. So in summary, my new routine after this challenge is gonna be a few times a week, I'm gonna go on a backwards walk with one of these on. I also know there's a lot of fitness lovers and bodybuilders who do backwards walking while pulling weights. That is something I would like to try. I feel like starting with this little weighted belt is a good place to start as I strengthen those muscles in my legs and my joints. So all in all, this challenge is not something I'm gonna continue for the long term. I'm gonna do 10 minute 
weighted sessions several times a week and then I think my bases will be covered. This is supposedly very good for knee rehabilitation and I think that if I had really bad knees I might notice more of a difference but my knees are okay and in addition to all the different types of physical activity I do I also stand on my full body vibration plate for 10 minutes every single day which is amazing for joint health and definitely helps my body recover from exercise more easily. So I think because I'm already in a pretty good place with my body, maybe the difference of adding in backwards walking is not as great as it might be with some people. <sighs> I'm gonna put this down for a second. I really like the cognitive load of this activity, that it does maybe require a little bit more presence and attention than walking forwards. I think that's a plus. I think that's meditative. I think it brings me to the present moment. So all in all, I think this has been a net positive experience. It hasn't been the most life-changing thing ever, but I feel pretty good about it and in general I just love these little tweaks of walking and vibration plate, walking backwards, walking with weights, all in an effort to help me feel so good when I'm standing and walking around this world because I go crazy if I spend too much of my day sitting down I go crazy up here and I go crazy in my body. So these little lifestyle tweaks that can help me build a strong core and proper posture and good little muscles in my legs and feet are so, so important to me. <laughs> I'm a happier person when I spend my day standing. That's why I have a treadmill standing desk. Super cheap to make. It's I literally have a little stool on top of a normal table and this walking pad, which all together probably cost me 120 bucks. If you just feel kind of physically stuck or mentally stuck, my solution is always get my body moving, get on my feet, get standing, and it just helps so much. Enough yip yapping from me. I would love to know if you guys have done backwards walking. Have you experimented with it long term, short term? Do you do it at home, outside, or have you never even heard of backwards walking? I hadn't really paid attention to it until you guys told me about it in the comments. By the way, if you have a new physical challenge or some sort of other challenge you want me to try, let me know down below. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I look forward to seeing you next time.